we have Dr. Claudia and Dr. Pauline joining today all the way from China to educate us on tuberculosis. As we all know, this is a month that we are creating awareness on tuberculosis. And they'll give us a tuberculosis so that we learn and we also create awareness elsewhere. So stay tuned. So Dr. Claude, Claude, Claudia, Dr. Pauli. Yes. Hello, Dr. Claudia. All right. Yes. Hi. Um, good. good day. And I hope we are all doing well. Yes, I am. Nice. So I'll start with Dr. Claudia. If you could give me a little introduction about yourself and then we'll start from there. All right. Uh, my name is Claudia Buhendwa, currently studying in Southern Medical University uh, in China. I'm in my fourth year, so not quite doctor yet, but <laughs> soon to be, yes. Okay, thank you very much. And that is what ICM Bell is all about. We are um, not just about the professionals, but also those upcoming. We train and we send them out into the field. So whether you are a student or whether you are a professional, it doesn't matter. Thank you very much, Claudia, for joining us today. And what do you have today for us on TB? Um, okay, so today we'll be looking at TB, tuberculosis. We'll be looking at diagnosis, pathogenesis, treatment, um, epidemiology, all of that. Um, so we're all able to just become more informed um, about this issue of tuberculosis. Um, okay, so like I mentioned, this is the topic of tuberculosis. Should I start my presentation now? Yes, please, you could go. Okay. And then your All voice right. will be a little louder. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so like I mentioned, um, we'll be talking about pathogenesis, diagnosis, treatment, and action plan. Um, like Dr. Eleanor mentioned earlier, this month is tuberculosis month. Um, so we have to look at an action plan. It's very necessary um, for medical professionals to know what to do, not just to stay informed, but to know what to do, what actions we can take as well. Um, so we'll start with the introduction. Uh, we will look at what is, you can go to the next screen, yeah. So what is tuberculosis? Um, as you can see, it's a potentially serious infectious disease spread by bacteria. Um, the bacteria is called mac macro microbacterium tuberculosis, that's what it's called. Um, and I wrote there potentially serious infectious disease because a lot of people um, have this bacteria or can catch this bacteria, but it might not be infectious. Um, and so we'll look further into that later on. But right now, you can understand that it's caused by a bacteria um, in the air. Um, it affects mainly our lungs, but also other or um, organs. And um, it's hard to trace back exactly how far the disease was discovered. Um, but people believe that it was hundreds of years ago and the cure uh, was found just recently, I'd say in the 1950s. And before that, the prognosis was very low, meaning that lots of people died because of un un they weren't aware of the disease. They didn't know how to treat it. And so that's what happened. So we can look at the epidemiology. We know that we see that every year there's over 10 million people who get this disease and 1.6 million people die of it yearly, which is a quite a large number, which is why it's one of the leading um, infectious diseases actually in the world today. And 30% um, of the world population have latent infection, which, is, which means that you can get the bacteria, but you're not necessarily able to um, transmit it or you don't experience any symptoms at that, at that moment, at that given moment of time. So if we look at this map that I've shown, that's shown over there, you can see the, um, 
you can see the amount of tuberculosis infections according to the, the darkness of the color. So you see that in many Southern African countries, the number of tuberculosis um, infections are much higher compared to Western world countries or more developed countries, right? Um, and so, yeah, you can see the relationship between tuberculosis and the environmental factors, um, even when it comes to um, poverty, malnutrition, there's a relationship, there's a correlation between that. And um, we, we know that for centuries, tuberculosis has been linked to these environmental factors such as air pollution, smoking, humidity, malnutrition, overcrowded living conditions. Um, and yeah, so going on to the pathogenesis, which is how the, uh, we'll look at the origin, we'll look at the development, and we'll look at the transmission of it. Um, so we'll start with the origin. I mentioned before that it was this, said to be discovered um, a while ago. So I've written here that the infectious, the, uh, the infectious agent, which is a bacteria, is called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and it's a rod-shaped, non-motile, slow-growing acid-fast bacteria. Non-motile just means that it doesn't move. Um, slow growing acid fast bacterium means that uh, we're able to see it under the microscope. Um, so it shows a certain pigment um, under the microscope. And so the first cure was discovered in 1940. And after this cure was discovered, um, there was a large reduction of tuberculosis, uh, tuberculosis cases because of the, the cure. Um, so moving on to its development, um, it was the cure. Yeah, the like most pathogens, um, Mycobacterium tuberculosis has evolved, and it has acquired many different stages over the years. Which means that it's necessary and very important for medical professionals and the medical field to continue to advance in discoveries and technology, just so that we can have an end to this disease, which causes, as we said before, 1.6 million deaths, which is a lot of deaths yearly. So it's it's so important as the disease is also evolving that we um, medical professionals also um, look into the proper development for it. Um, here, this is the development of the bacteria inside your body. So you can see in the picture that uh, it starts off as usually um, immune, when you have a compromised immune system, so people with AIDS or, or elderly people who have a compromised immune system, um, for them, it's easier to um, fall sick with this um, disease. And so later on, it spreads to your lungs, to the upper lobes of your lungs. And there you start to, to, to develop symptoms. Um, and later on, your memory T cells release cytokines, which is a immune response. So when your bacteria enters the body, that's a, a natural immune response. Um, and it causes inflammation and all this other stuff and leading to caseous necrosis, which is um, when the cells in your lungs begin to basically die, causing cavities. And then this is, can also lead to the spread of the bacteria in your body. Um, then next we'll look at the transmission. So um, it can be, we, we talked about it being airborne. So it can be transmitted with coughs, laughing, speaking, just it spreads to the air. Um, and so when you, the, the germs, um, these germs can stay in the air for several hours, depending on the environment, which is why I earlier as well, I mentioned that um, when you're in an environment which is enclosed, which doesn't have um, ventilation or stuff, it's easy for this bacteria to just grow and to stay several hours, you know, in, inside the air. So, um, yeah. So when you breathe in these particles, um, you're able to get the bacteria. I've written here that people who breathe in the air containing these TB germs can become infected, and this is called latent TB infection. Um, which it, um, so what's the difference between latent TB infection and the tuberculosis disease is that people with the uh, tuberculosis disease 
um, one, they, they, uh, they usually have the symptoms of tuberculosis, which we'll also look at, but symptoms occur um, and you're able to transmit it. But those with the latent TB infection, you're not able to transmit the disease. And so, um, yeah, that's basically, you just, have the, you just have the bacteria, but you're not able to transmit it. And it may develop maybe later on in your life, but it's not a large, it's not a big risk at that moment in time. So looking at um, the symptoms, you can see cough, you can see um, weight loss, fever, poor appetite, all of these are um, symptoms depending on the stage of the infection that you're at, you may have different um, symptoms, also depending on your other medical, previous medical conditions. So if, for example, you had um, uh, AIDS and, that, and then you developed tuberculosis afterwards, um, you may have different symptoms as opposed to someone who just got the infection through, um, it was transmitted by someone else around them. So different symptoms, but mainly it's coughs, mainly it's fever, um, weakness, as you can see. And yeah, so it affects many organs as well. It affects our lungs, our lymph nodes. Um, but like I mentioned before, it's mainly the lungs which it affects. Um, okay, so now looking into the diagnosis, they are, we have to do, there are two main tests to detect tuberculosis in the body. It's not very hard, not very hard tests actually. It's called the TB skin test and the TB blood test. So the TB skin tests, it just um, tests whether or not you have the bacteria, um, but it could be you have bacteria, but not experiencing any symptoms, which we, we talked about latent, um, latent infection. Um, so that's why the TB skin test is not definite. It's not um, necessarily the only test that they usually do. And then there's the, the blood test. And so that's where we are able to detect whether the bacteria is really inside the blood. Um, so here you can see just the process of how mm, generally medic, medic, medical doctors would um, diagnose TB. So you look at the symptoms, you'd look at whether it's active, or latent, and then you do tests like chest ray tests, you do um, microscopy tests, you can even do CT scans, you can even do um, sputum tests, and all of those, and you can finally get a definite treatment, I mean, definite diagnosis of um, tuberculosis. Yes, and then here I showed a few images of how it is diagnosed. So in the first picture is it is a chest x-ray. Um, yeah, you can see a few, uh, some enlargement. We talked about swelling. We talked about um, cavities um, and all of this. And in the top, top right, you can see um, how the speech and tests show the bacteria under the microscope. It's very clear, because um, we said, early, I mentioned earlier as well, it's acid fast. So it's very easy to detect under the microscope, actually. And the bottom right corner is um, a CT scan of their lungs. And so there you can see the nodules and um, you can see the, the bronchioles are kind of like uh, branched. Um, these are signs of tuberculosis. You can also see the thickening of the bronchioles and the bronchial wall. Those are all things that doctors have to pay attention to when doing these tests in order to properly diagnose um, tuberculosis. Yes. Um, next, we'll look at treatment. Um, TB disease can be treated by taking several diseases, sorry, several drugs for up to six to 12 months. Um, so it's very important that people take this TB disease, the disease treatment and finish all the medicine. Otherwise, it can lead to other things if they don't take the prescription properly. Um, so yeah, being treated well and being, and being consistent with the treatment is very important um, to combat the disease. Otherwise, it, may, it can come back if it's not taken care of properly. 
So these are a few um, medications. Oh, these are a few magic medications that- uh, Not to cut you short, but- um, Sorry. You have a little minute to um, sum up and wrap up for us so that mm -hmm. um, Dr. Pauline can also add up to some of what yeah, you yeah. said. Yes, I'm almost done. It's almost done. So these are a few medications um, that are taken, as well as the vaccine, which is used for prevention purposes. Um, and so, yeah, action plan, which I mentioned, is very important in the beginning. So prevention is better than cure all the time. So being able to take the vaccine, um, manage your environment and keeping a healthy immune system because I mentioned that it's easier for um, immune compromised people to get tuberculosis. So it's easier for them specifically. So yeah, those three points are very important for um, keeping it. And here, just as just, you can read it over yourself, but um, it's just, uh, I looked at the WHO um, plans that they have in order to combat tuberculosis and these are a few points um, and aims that they have um, to prevent it. And as we know that this month, March the 24th is World Tuberculosis Day. And so the, 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 the quote this year is, yes, we can end TB um, and, you can, and since the development of this, you, there's 74 million lives have been saved globally um, through the efforts in, to end TB. And so that's a very large number and very important. And lastly, um, yes. Yeah, you can move on to the next one. Yes, so to summarize, um, I think that we as medical professionals should be able to properly diagnose tuberculosis in order to properly treat it um, so that we can able we can come we can end tuberculosis and so getting correct prevention correct diagnosis correct treatment is integral to ending tuberculosis yes thank you thank you very much claudia i must admit that you presented like a pro and <laughs> really appreciate that um now moving on to Dr. Pauline. Dr. Pauline, Dr. Pauline Johnson, can you please introduce yourself for us to know you? Okay, thank you so much. So um, my name is Pauline S. Johnson and I am a PhD candidate at Central South University. And uh, my research actually is focused on infectious disease, particularly HIV and AIDS. So as uh, to know the quality of life of people living with HIV and AIDS. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I think Claudia has said so much. She's, she's made your work very easy. Um, we would also want to concentrate on the prevention of TB. So if you can give us an introduction of TB, fine. But what are some of the ways we can prevent TB um, in our population, especially coming from the developing oh. countries or underdeveloped countries? Okay, so uh, one way that we can actually prevent uh, this disease is to uh, create awareness. Uh, create more awareness about uh, the disease. So awareness actually is very, 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 very important in the prevention and control for the disease. Yeah, so if we can educate more people on the cause, the treatment, the spur, and the prevention of the disease is actually really important. Yeah, because um, knowledge actually is key in uh, the prevention. It actually have the tendency to actually shape uh, one's uh, attitude and also knowledge together with attitude can uh, create a, a prevention plan for the disease. So it's really, really important. And one way we can do that is by testing. Yeah, so if we can have more people that can actually uh, know about the disease, then we can have more people coming out to be screened for the disease. Yeah, they can actually check with their doctors, 
they can actually check with laboratory to be screened for the disease and testing actually is very important it actually help us to create um new markers for high risk and low risk individuals so um evidence based uh, actually like research or doctors can actually know who to treat and uh, how to treat so we can be able to end this uh, disease because actually it's actually curable and preventable so yes we can actually end this disease together if we can create more awareness yeah thank you very much um you know when you were younger in my country like this when you are a day old you are given the bcg um injection everybody has got that scar on their hand right um is it very protective yeah is it that people who get the disease didn't get the bcg or is it because at the moment the um, vaccination wore away? Uh, what's what's the duration of um, protection of the BCG if there is any? Oh, the BCG actually is um, very imp important and it is very effective. Actually, it help us to uh, be able to prevent uh, the disease because it's actually given to us when we are our children, so we can be able to um, prevent the disease and it serves as a, main, uh, a boost to our immune system. So especially for uh, countries that are at high risk of this disease. So um, it serves as a boost to the immune system so we can um, actually be able to prevent the disease. It have actually helped, yeah, we have research have shown that it have actually helped in uh, actually uh, curtailing and also uh, controlling for the disease, yeah. So it's really, really important that we actually vaccinate our children, especially, yeah, on a five, it's actually important that we vaccinate them with the BCG so we can actually be able to help them uh, so as when they are exposed to to um, the uh, infection, it can actually help them to prevent uh, the exposure. Yeah, that's wonderful. It, it reduces the risk, because if people don't take it, I'm sure by now everybody will just be having some TV or... And when it comes to the types, I heard Dr. Um, Claudia talking about the latent and then the active. You can um, talk more about it and also include um, how to screen when you are in the latent phase, because apparently the latent phase, it's not very obvious. So how do you screen when you're in the latent phase? Okay, so uh, the latent uh, stage of the disease, as Dr. Cardia rightly said, is the stage where it is very inactive, so you don't see much of a symptom or you don't feel sick. So um, actually, this is the stage where it is very, very, very inactive. And the only way that we can actually detect that there is a TB or tuberculosis infection is by testing. Yeah, so um, that's why I said that actually testing is very, very important. It is really one effective way that we can actually prevent the disease. So um, the latent stage, it doesn't show symptoms, we don't show symptoms, we don't feel sick. But um, with our treatment, uh, with our testing, if we cannot detect um, the length of uh, TB within our lungs, then it actually it has the tendency to progress or develop into the active stage of the disease. So it is really, really important that we actually have more people going out for screening so we can actually be able to know, especially if you know that you have been exposed to um, uh, the TB or you have uh, traveled to country where the TB infection is really, really, really serious. Yeah. Sure. Thank you very much about that too. Um, with the um, treatment, we have a lot of medications and now people are also getting the resistance. So what are we doing about the um, multi-drug resistance to tuberculosis? If you can talk about the treatment, the medications, and then how we can work on the multi-drug resistance. 
Okay, so um, there are a lot of treatment calls for the disease, <laughs> and yeah, so um, yeah, so there are a lot of lot of treatment calls, and we also have advances with regards to uh the treatment. So, and uh, we can actually actually treat the lengthened stage, so as uh the uh, for the disease not to develop uh, to the active stage and thank uh, goodness to uh, um, uh, advances in the treatment course of the disease. So we now have uh, the length of treatment. It has been shortened uh, from six to nine months to four to three months. And actually this uh, course of treatment has shown progress and it is very important and also safe it's very very safe it is very important and very effective and it has also shown um very high completion rate as well so with regards to um resistant to the disease we can actually actually uh, once we are taking uh, the medication and we are developing resistance to the disease or to the medication rather sorry we can actually uh, reach out to our doctors very very quickly that way they can be able to uh, provide another treatment plan for us yeah Exactly. When we are resisting, we need to talk more with our professionals. Um, so what's the future plan for, especially those in um, far-reached areas, maybe like the very rural areas, how are they going to also get access to the screening, the information we are having and all that? What are some of the things we can do to get to those high and um, hard-to-reach groups? Okay, so um, that is actually um, with regards to the theme of this year, um, uh, tuberculosis awareness with regards to the theme. So yeah, WHO and other organization are actually um, are reaching out to our government, reaching out to our organization to actually help because yeah, um, people actually uh, are able to afford with regards to treatment and other uh, um, materials of the disease. But what, like you are saying, what about those in the rural area? So we can actually reach out to them even more. Yeah, we can reach out to them even more. So uh, the theme for this year is uh, for us to and this disease and that is for us to reach to the people that are unprivileged so we can actually go into the rural era if we can yeah we can go into the rural era and we can actually create more awareness and we can also uh, uh, create a more free screening as well for people that are unable to reach out within the operant area we can create more free screening for them as well so as like we all can uh, just combat this disease together yeah yeah very important we all have to do this together it's not just the government or one person involved in um, reaching out to them and i think and i hope our message will go very far further than it is here um a message just came in um there are some side effects to the medications we've been they've been given them like the rifampicin and then some of those medications can you highlight some of the side effects of the drugs they take yeah oh okay so some of the side effect of the drugs is that um if you like you can experience skin rashes yeah so if you are experiencing such if you are on a medication it's very very important for you to actually reach out to your doctor yeah the doctors are really really important yeah in this fight as well so we have some skin rashes and uh yellowish eye as well if you are having that and you feel dizzy also like 
weakness and if you have fever if you are on a medication and you have fever for more than three days it's actually really important for you to reach out to your doctor yeah yeah very very important some of these things will be allergies or even just uh, mere coincidence so it's important to reach out to your healthcare professional so that they will be able to diagnose exactly what it is. Thank you very much, Dr. Pauline. Any final words to our listeners, those watching you? Hello. Okay, so, hello. Hello. Oh, all right. Dr. Hart, your hands are up. Okay. Greeting to everyone. Are uh, you got to me, Claire? Yes, please. We can hear you very loud and clear. Yes. Uh, I want to thank the team for a brilliant presentation. I think it is necessary that we do this as often as we can because uh, TB is not just and no, a bare infectious disease. It is a very complex pathology that affects all the body organs, from the lung, to the bone, to the brain, to the liver, you can just name it. So it is very important that this awareness be carried out, and not just um, in the cities where we have internet connection, but, but also, into the interior in the villages where most people may not have access to internet connection. And, and I just want to add a few things considering that I'm a surgeon and a cardiothoracic thoracic surgeon on the complications of tuberculosis. Now, few things we look out when our patients have tuberculosis is how effective is our treatment protocol how compliance, okay, compliant are the patients to the treatment regime because uh, research has proved that we have increased now in resistance, okay, to treatment. So we have an increase in, uh, um, you know, drugs resistance, strain, I mean, increasing, which we then lead our patients you know, into complications. And few of these complications will include massive hemoptysis, the patient has the tuberculosis, you treat them, and they begin to cough up blood, huge quantity of blood. Those patients, I mean, we have to go for surgical, I mean, uh, outlook to make sure, okay, that the blood can be controlled. Another complication is pulse, the one we call empyema, poorly treated or resistant strain, okay, may lead to the process of pulse forming in the chest, and this patient, once you have the patient and they were tuberculosis, the patient came back and the patient have continued to have difficulty breathing, chest pain, shortness of breath. You must send the patient for chest X-ray, repeat chest X-ray if possible, a CT scan. And if there is evidence of pause, then the patient must be referred to the thoracic surgeon. There are times, okay, the disease becomes diffuse or very destructive. It destroys the loop of the lung or the entire lung, those patients will need surgical intervention. Another time, we have the infection process stays so too long, the abscess form in, we did not see the abscess, we did not treat on time, and then they, 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 they develop a complication between the bronchial and the pleural, and that those patients will develop bronchial uh, pleural fistula, and these are the patients you will treat and treat and treat, the infection process cannot resolve send them for CT scan or bronchoscope and you can find the fistula and you can refer them, okay, for, for treatment. And again, persistent cavity, if we are treating our patients with tuberculosis with the appropriate drugs and our patients are adherent to the, the, the treatment regimen and we are not seeing treatment at the expected time, let's do this, a, a, a CT scan. Sometimes we have persistent cavity that is not allowing, okay, resolution of, 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 of the, the disease process. And this patient also need 
to be sent to the chest okay, physician for further evaluation and if possible, surgical intervention. So I just want to just add up, okay, that, I mean, this is, this is a complex pathology we're dealing with, can move from medical kind of treatment, you can end up into a very, very, very serious complications that the patient will also need surgery. So our patients should know that when they have tuberculosis, they must adhere to the treatment, otherwise they will end up in a surgical unit. That's the contribution I wanted to make. Otherwise, thank you for this, the, the, the presentation and thank you for the knowledge. Thank you very much, Dr. Hart. That was very insightful. Any final words, um, Dr. Pauline? Okay, so um, prevention actually is better than cure, and we all can actually serve as agent in preventing this disease because it's actually really um, curable and it is preventable. So we can actually serve as agent and just as the team of the CSA, yes, we can, we can actually do that. And there have actually been a uh, prospect with regards to a uh, life that have been safe. Yeah, and yeah, that Krada also spoke on that. Yeah, so we can actually, actually, actually um, like work together. Yeah, we can work together in any this disease. And that is, um, first of all, we can actually, actually prevent uh, the disease. And so it is our hope that if you are exposed to uh, the TB disease, that is if you are in country where the disease is really, really prevalent, you can actually go to your laboratory um, uh, technician, you can actually go to your, your healthcare center, you can go to the, the doctors. I think uh, some other places, the testing is really, really free. Yeah. So um, we can just prevent this disease because the uh, sooner it is detected, the better. So at the length stage, we uh, cannot uh, have where you can develop the TB active disease itself. So we, if we can actually have every uh, uh, infection at the length stage where we can treat that, before it uh, actually escalate to um, the TB disease, it will actually be really, really helpful. So uh, finally, I just want uh, to caution all of us for us to just um, give in so we can actually be able to create awareness. Yeah, awareness is very, very important with regards to sure. intervention, with regards to policy making. Yeah, it's actually really important with that. in even evidence-based and research is very, very important so we can actually you can do that and I can do that. Anyone can do it, seriously. So yeah, yeah. any anyone can just uh yeah, yeah create involved. awareness on the, yeah, yeah, we are all involved so oh, we nice. can be able to uh end the disease. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Dr. Johnson Pauline. And thank you very much, Claudia, for also joining us today. And TB is curable, TB is treatable, TB is also preventable. Um, let's try and get screened. If we have babies, we should get our BCGs and stay safe. Thank you very much for watching us, for listening and for all the contribution. Um, it's been International Christian Medical Fellowship coming your way with awareness, um, creation of tuberculosis. God bless you, shalom. Dr. Abala, do you have anything to say for us before we close? Okay, thank you. And thank you, Dr. Claudia. Thank you, Dr. Pauline, for joining us and um, speaking early to the many voices out there. Thank you, Dr. Hart, for that uh, surgical point of view. I, not to also scare you as a neurosurgeon, yes, tuberculosis can also uh, lead you to seeing your neurosurgeon. You may have to even have a brain surgery because uh, you could have the infection going to your brain. It could end up having a brain abscess in your brain. And in that case, if uh, a surgical intervention from a neurosurgeon is not done, you could die. So tuberculosis is not, you know, just coughing sickness. You know, people take it so simple. It is not. So you could end up 
during a, a, a cardiothoracic surgeon may have, may have end up opening your chest or you die. Uh, a neurosurgeon may have to end up opening up your brain to take up the, the abscess, or you could have a, a, a pop disease where uh, it damages your, your, your body break, your, your bone in your back, that you won't be able to walk until a neurosurgeon can be able to uh, do a surgery for you and do instrumentation. So it's, it is that terrible. So the complications can be uh, wide to the point that um, you don't want to get to that point. So I want to encourage all of you those that are listening, um, you can send in questions later to the live stream. We'll be able to follow up with answer. We may not have all the time to answer all the questions now, but I want to say thank you for coming and thank you to our guests today for joining us and giving this awareness. Thank you.